direct from Fort Meade, Maryland, this is Dinfos Live. Hello and welcome to the episode of Dinfos Live. Now you may be asking yourself, this doesn't look like my normal Dinfos Live, and you're right. We're actually here in the Dinfos graduation room at the Defense Information School. Well, let me introduce myself. If you haven't known me before, I'm Major David J. Murphy, an instructor here at the Defense Information School. And let's get on with our episode of Dinfos Live. Now, in this month's episode, we're talking all about shooting action. So specifically things like moving objects, moving people, and you see this a lot in sports. So to talk about shooting sports, we have our guest with us today, Sergeant First Class William Tanner. Come on in, Sergeant First Class Tanner. Thank good to you, meet. sir. Appreciate it. Good to meet you, too, Have sir. Appreciate it. Well, thank you for taking time out to come on this show and, and talk to us today. Uh, you've got, of course, uh, an interesting experience having had the opportunity to shoot the Army-Navy game, and we're going to talk about that. We really want to hear about your experience. Uh, but first, tell us a little bit about your personal experience, your, your work, and also what you do for the military. Okay. Uh, well, right now, I'm an instructor at the Defense Information School, uh, team lead for Team 2, and then... Uh, Beforehand, uh, when I first started my military career, I started out as a Marine, and then I transferred over to the Marine. Raw. Yeah, raw. <laughs> uh, then I transferred over to the Army, um, became a combat engineer, and I was, uh, was that for five years, took a tour in Afghanistan, came back, changed my MOS. Uh, about a year later, 2013, came here to Dinfos, and then from here, three months after that, went to Germany, and I was there for three years with the 2nd Cavalry Regiment. Wow and uh, Operation Atlantic Resolve happened over there. It's kind of where I cut my teeth as a photographer. And after that three years, 2016, went to the first, our Fort Bliss, uh, 1AD with a 24th PCH. I was there for about 10 months. I deployed for six of those 10 almost. And um, while I was there, I got accepted to Syracuse. Okay. While I was deployed out to Poland and Latvia and Stuttgart. And uh, so when I came back, four months later, I was off to Syracuse. Um, went to Syracuse, graduated Syracuse program, the military photojournalism program, and uh, came here. And That's I've great. been here since 2018, and I leave here in next year. Okay, great. Well, that's awesome. Well, you know, obviously that's a big change you did, changing services and changing careers. What actually inspired that change for you? Uh, mainly to stay, I wanted to remain active duty. Um, when it came to changing the branches, uh, I love the Marine Corps, never say anything bad about the Marine Corps, <laughs> uh, but I needed to stay active duty and not go into a reserve status, so uh, just transferred branches. Uh, my MOS was full up at the time in the Marine Corps, so I just ended up transferring branches. Uh, when it came to job, uh, I felt I had done my fill as an engineer, and I wanted to see what the, li what the Army life was like outside of the engineers. and. It's going to become a helicopter mechanic or traffic control air traffic controller. Uh, I thought that would make good money outside of the military. I never really planned on staying in, uh, but when when I got offered this job, uh, I, I was told by the staff sergeant at the time, like he thinks he thought I'd be really good at it, and I I kind of agreed with him. And I thought that it'd be great to be able to go to other units and be able to do what they do for, and take photographs of it. And then when they had to go to formation in their unit, I could go off and edit photographs <laughs> and, and write stories. So that's what I ended up doing. Yeah. And um, it's, I, I just, I love it. It's the best job I've ever had in my entire life. And I had a, quite a few jobs outside of the military. Uh, and I just, I, I swear by this job. I think it's excellent. That's great, that's great. And you've had a full military career now. So yeah, never really know which direction you're gonna go sometimes, but I'm glad it worked out well for you. Um, so talk to us a little bit about the Army-Navy game. So you got the experience to, to cover this really you know, famous game. Uh, of course, we <laughs> had our own little rivalry here in the, the schoolhouse because we are a joint school. So talk to me about the, the getting the opportunity to shoot this game and what that was like. Okay, it was amazing. Um, I, I'm really appreciative of the opportunity to do it. It's something that I've been wanting to do for a while. Uh, when I was at Syracuse, I was able to shoot some college basketball, college soccer, uh, but this put me on a front stage, uh, you know, because it's a national game. Everybody pays attention to this game. Uh, it's, it's a huge deal, especially for us in the military. So um, started out the night before, 
just getting my gear together, taking two different kits and trying to combine them and make sure that I needed, that I had what I needed. Um, wasn't going to get any uh, interviews or anything like that. I was strictly going to get B-roll footage along with photography and maybe a video vlog. So I, uh, I made sure that I consolidated my my kits, uh, my camera kit, my D750 kit, which is similar to the ones the students have, and then my personal kit, which was a Z50. And so I designated the 750 for the video and the Z50 for the photo. I made sure I had everything for each, lenses, cleaning supplies, uh, wipes, things of that nature. Put it in a kit, got ready, left at about 10 o'clock on Saturday, uh, drove two hours to Philadelphia. As soon as I got there, got to the front gate and police officer asked me to hold still and had a, like a ball with his dog and was like getting him to sniff the ball and then he came up to me with the dog and was like can I follow you okay you know I'll, I'll go with that uh, so walked for it he ended up I guess because I'm walking into a, an arena with a huge bag sure having to check it uh, went through the press stop uh, they checked the bag again and then I ended up going to a press holding area down inside the tunnels of Philadelphia Eagles uh, Stadium. And um, it was awesome. I got to walk and they have pictures down there and up there. Um, and you just get to walk along the tunnels that the players do and the coaches do and historic figures of, you know, in sports have walked, which I thought was awesome. Um, got to the media room, was able to put down my stuff, grab my cameras. I had my D750 that went here and then I had like a shoulder kind of M4 strap for my my personal camera, put that on, got the vest that they give you, the red vest to put on, and went to the field. And immediately just started shooting all the pregame warm-ups. I was out there for uh, about an hour before the game started. Um, tried to get all the pictures I could get and all the B-roll I could get that was undisturbed by all the excitement that was just about to happen. Um, as soon as that started happening and this game started getting close to starting, all of a sudden, you know, we had flyovers, uh, by jets, we had helicopters flying over, we had parachutists jumping in, um, we had the, the works, the national anthem, everything. It was amazing. It, it, it's kind of like uh, we were speaking earlier in you, Super Bowl-ish feeling, you know? Um, you see it on TV. I've been watching the Army-Navy game for as long as I can remember. And I just, you see all the events on TV, but you never really experience it unless you're there. And um, it was just so strong and everybody so loud and everybody was having a good time. And uh, so it was, it was just a wonderful time. I shot the first half, I got video, video one direction while I was shooting the other direction with my other camera. Came in halftime, changed out my batteries, changed out my lenses, came back out a second half or the uh, second half of the game and uh, just shot till the end of the game. And then the uproar at the game, because of course history was made double OT we ended up winning first OT in the series history so it was it was amazing just being there being swamped by the crowd and being just being a part of what happened was just phenomenal and I'm really appreciative of Dinfos uh, for getting me there no that's absolutely great and before we get too far in our interview I just want to let everybody know if you have any questions for Sergeant First Class Tanner about shooting the Army Navy game or about you know shooting action or sports or whatnot please put those in the comments down below and we will read them on the air I promise you so leave those questions down below all right great well obviously a pretty interesting experience for you all talk to me about the kit you actually took with you like you said you, you mentioned you had two different camera bodies but what kind of lenses were you choosing batteries memory cards all that fun stuff what went into your kit selection so when i broke down the the 750 kit the d7 nikon d750 kit um it's like i said it's similar to the ones that the students have uh, the instructors are given that kit to uh, be able to teach from it Mm -hmm. uh, so there were things in there like a uh, shotgun mic, uh, rails for the shotgun mic to go on, cords that attach to the camera from the mic. Um, those are things that I kind of did away with. I didn't take with me because I wanted to free up space and I wanted to make sure that whatever I needed I had immediately available to me. I had a 50 millimeter lens, I had the 200 millimeter lens, a 70 millimeter lens um, for, for the D750. I also made sure that my memory cards were cleaned out, uh, that I had two 64 gigs and two uh, 32 gigs um, ready and available, ready to go. For, uh, so I, had, I brought my own personal uh, kit. Um, when it came to memory cards. 
uh, batteries, had two batteries for the D750, had those charged up. I also charged up the A batteries, even though I was not bringing the mics, wanted to have them on me just in case. Uh, it just made me feel better, I guess. Um, didn't bring any uploading equipment like wires, USB cords, or anything like that because I wasn't planning on doing any uploading at the game. I know that there were other uh, our photojournalists that were there and they'd go back to the media room and they'd upload and then they'd go back out to the field and they just that constant battle um, because I was doing it for this show and for Dinfos I would I had the luxury we'll, we'll call it a luxury I had the luxury of not having to do that I could just gather my Im imagery bring it back here and then over the rest of the weekend work on it and have it ready um, for my personal kit my D my Z50 uh, same, pretty much the same thing. Uh, I have, but I have a 250 lens for that. Um, I also have some macro 16 millimeter lenses um, that I brought out there just in case I could get some really in depth shots. Mm -hmm. um, it turns out that because the lens that I have, the macro lens that I have for that, is actually for the b camera body for the 750. I had to have I have an adapter for it, but okay. having to switch lenses because I was constantly switching lenses sure. throughout the game, it just it was bulky and yeah. they, uh, so I, I I ended up bringing just a small 55 millimeter and just smaller lenses. Um, I made sure that I mounted the long lens like so my 200 on one, my 250 on the other, and those were mounted so that that way <coughs> excuse me when I actually carried lenses on me, the smaller ones were the ones I was carrying on a constant basis. So when my camera's hung from me, the longer ones hung, so I, it wasn't so clunky in the pockets. Was there anything you wish you could have brought or you know, maybe not forgot, but you know, something like, oh man, I wish I had that thing because now I'm anticipating something I didn't know before I got here? I definitely wish I had a gimbal yeah. um, to, get, uh, to get video smoother, sure. um, to be able to pan better. Uh, a gimbal would have been awesome for video. Uh, in an ideal world, I'd love to have a chest mount, a GoPro. I saw some people with a GoPro on. Oh, wow. Um, it, I mean, it's not like the games we have around here or local games uh, when we play Army, Navy, flag football games and stuff where right. you can just stra hey, strap this GoPro on. Of course. Um, because it's on a big, you know, big university, can't do that. Uh, and so I would have liked to have one on me to be able to, to follow myself around. Sure. Um, and when I got up into the huddles and stuff like that, I think those, that would have been a cool thing to see. So there are a couple of things I would have wanted. A uh, harness to hold on, that would have been nice. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, I just I worked with what I had. Absolutely. Now you mentioned there were some other media at the event. Obviously this is a very well known and, and highly, highly sought after game to cover. Talk to me about your interactions with other media. What media you saw there, both military and civilian, and your interactions with them. So there were a lot of, a lot of media out there. Um, the main media was CBS Sports and they were lined up right next to me on the sideline. Um, pretty much in an event like that because uh, I, I would assume the ownership rights of the event are, for, are with that conglomerate. So sure. they, whenever they wanted a shot or needed a shot, they would, and I had the shot they wanted, they would step in front of me and then they'd move. Um, but they were very polite, like they weren't rude, uh, more authoritative than anything else, like because they have to get the shot. You, uh, there's, that's live. Yes. <laughs> so they have to get it. Um, there were other, other, lots of other photographers there. Um, some were military, I believe. They, we were all in civilian clothes, so it was really hard to tell, but sure. you could tell how they conducted themselves of that course. they may have been military. The school themselves are, had their own PA, um, their own photographers who kind of wanted to keep all the other photographers at a distance <laughs> from the team so they could get right. their shots. Of course. Um, and then, I mean, everybody else, I just, I met a lot, of, a lot of nice photographers. I met one that was out of New Jersey. I met one that was out of Philly. And they actually, at the end of the game, uh, when the field got empty, mm -hmm. they uh, we all stood at the 50 yard line and they t took a pictures of each other with each other's phone oh, yeah. to com commemorate it. Sure. And I mean, who else do you want taking your photo? I mean, you can take a selfie, but if you got a professional photographer there that you can give your phone to, yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. But they, it was it, they were wonderful. Like I, I I couldn't have asked for more. There was a we were having conversations. The freshman players behind me, um, they weren't dressed out in uniform because they're freshman players. They're right. red shirted, so they had their sweaters on and their hat, their beanies on, and they're all standing behind us. There's like 20 or 30 of them. And the CBS sports are videographers right next to me. 
and it's kind of like a triangle. We're just, we're talking with them, they're talking with us, they're looking at what we're shooting, they're saying, oh, that's awesome, you know, that's a great picture, that's a great video. So it was, it was just like a trifecta. It was, it was really, really cool. It was a great experience. Well, that's great. Hopefully you made some good friends and networked some, with some other professionals and maybe you'll engage with them or see them again at other events. I hope so, absolutely. Well, that's great. Well, let's get on with talking about some of the photographs that you actually shot out there. So I think the first one we're going to look at here is of a uh, player, an army player, catching a football. So you talk to us a little about this photograph and kind of what went into it. Okay, so this this was a uh, they were they had tr the army was when I first came out on the field, the army was in front of me, um, but then they transitioned over to the other side of the field to allow the navy to where we were. So I walked around the field and got to this field, and they they were doing warm ups. Warm ups consisted of routes. Um, they had linemen hitting dummies, tackling dummies. Uh, they were actually hitting each other, trying to just get, get each other. It's like a boxer who gets his face slapped mm -hmm. before, before the bout. He wants to get his face ready for the punches he's going to get. That's what they were doing with each other. So um, having, again, having played the sport, I've, I've been playing football my entire life. Wow. And so I, I kind of know what I want to see and where I want to see it. And I lined up on the receiver line where they're going out, running their routes. He was actually running an inside curl. So he was running up and then turning inside. And I just, I watched it. And knowing what I know about the sport, I positioned myself behind the receivers, backed up a little bit and just tried to catch what I could. I wanted to catch the solid pass. I wanted to freeze it. I didn't want to blur the motion and I wanted to put him in rule of thirds. I want to put him right where there, you could see everything else that was going on to his left, but at the same time, you could get a solid photo of him catching in his hands, and I was lucky enough to do that. Yeah, I, got this, I like this le nice leading line of the actual field uh, line going to the, the person, so that's pretty nice uh, there as well. Okay, great. Well, let's go ahead and go to the next photo. I think this is kind of a, a funny one, a cute one. You got this uh, gentleman here who is uh, showcasing his muscles while yes. wearing a American... Uh, Captain America style helmet. Talk to me a little about this uh, photo, what's going on here. So he called himself A-Man and okay. <laughs> he was kind of like a mascot for the for the West Point cadets. Okay. And I believe he is a West Point cadet himself. Uh, he, took, he took the fur jacket that we wear, or the faux fur jacket as it were. The cut fleece? The, the fleece, there you go. And cut, this, cut the sleeves off so that he could show his massive guns. And um, just stood around, just hyping everybody up. When they, when a uh, touchdown was scored, he'd go out and do push-ups on the field. He'd jump around. Um, he was just a constant hype man, like the uh, Flavor Flav of West Point. Okay. And uh, so it, it, I, I just I asked him. I was like, "Can I take your photo?" And it just seemed right to do it right beneath the students that he was hyping up the whole time. And yeah. he so he posed for me, and I got a portrait of him uh, flexing and looking right at I, th I thought it was great. I just thought it was a real fun photo to have. And he was a really nice guy, really nice guy. Nice, nice. Good to find those sort of quieter, or not quieter, but you know, funny moments as well. Absolutely. I'm sure there were a ton of those that were going on. There were, there were. Well, that's great. Well, let's go ahead on to our next photo. And this is one of uh, one of the Army Golden Knights, I believe, yes. landing on the field. Talk to me a little about this photo. So they, they, uh, they all jumped from a plane. First it was the Navy, and then it was the Army. And um, first it was the SEALs, and it was the Golden Knights. And it's, it, I caught them because everything's going on at the same time. So all the photographers are aiming upwards, but I don't think a lot of them spent as much time shooting the parachutists as they came down as I did. Right. Because to us in the military, that's always a great shot. Whenever you're out with the airborne, when I was out in, in Latvia and Romania with the 173rd and they were jumping in country, uh, for that show of force with Russia, like it's, it was the, it was great to see their patterns that they had in the sky and stuff. So, for me, it was any any time I can capture uh, one of them jumping in, especially in an arena, it's it's going to be where I'm focusing on. And so I I just spiraled it down with them. I spiraled around with them and just tracked them all the way from when they jumped out of the plane all the way to the other side of the the stadium when they just flew in. So our drifted in so it was it was something that I really wanted to get absolutely and were there any other pre-game events like this Blue Angel flyover or anything like that yes absolutely Blue Angels flew over uh, there were um, some other jets that flew over I don't know the nomenclature of them but uh, helicopters yeah there was helicopter formation lots of fireworks uh, just there was a whole bunch just uh, it, it was a, a huge spectacle and uh, what you would want to see 
for done for the military. Yeah. Um, just uh, everybody there, regardless of whether they deployed or not, signed on that dotted line and are offered to give their lives for this country. And I feel like the showmanship that was shown uh, was very, uh, they were very deserving of it. That's great, that's great. Well, let's go on to this shot here. It shows our, uh, the looks like the Army cadets uh, yes. watching the game. Talk to us a little about this photo because it's kind of not traditional, so. Yeah, it's not, I, I, I got the emotion. And sometimes in the moment, your focus uh, you, you may have a camera problem, you may have a camera issue, you may uh, have uh, something that I, like I had, and I couldn't get the focus off of the band. That's the band members at the bottom who have the white uh, rank insignias. And so, but I kept seeing this one cadet just scream her head off, and she was just going, and I just kept clicking. I was on high continuous, and I just kept clicking, and I, for some reason my focus wouldn't adjust, but it would stay on the band. So, it's not traditionally focused on where the emotion is actually coming from. However, it shows the reaction of the band as they have somebody behind them screaming their head off and they're just trying to either deal with it or act normal because they know where it's coming from. Most people, when somebody screams, kind of like look back at whoever it is. Right. You can tell that they're just trying to go about their time waiting because they, they expect it to happen. And then the guy in the right-hand corner seems to kind of be trying to drown her out a little yeah. bit. For something like this, you, knew, you mentioned focus, right? Mm -hmm. And focus is something that is somewhat tricky to deal with when you're shooting high action unless you have a camera that is you know, very much able to latch on to the subject and follow them Absolutely. the entire time. For shooting both the sports and really anything when you're out there, how often were you using automatic focus versus manual focus? And, and when did you choose kind of between, switching between those? I was constantly switching back and forth. Yeah. Um, I think that I mainly started switching back to manual when it started getting darker. Okay. Um, when, when I wasn't, when whatever I was aiming my lens at wasn't getting the light that I wanted. Right. When um, I tried to use exposure compensation a little bit, uh, but that was kind of throwing off the pitch and feel of the shadows. So I turned that off and then I just started adjusting, of course, my aperture and my shutter. Sure. Um, and my, I, my ISO. Yeah. Um, but when my ISO started climbing up a little high, it's okay on my D on my Z50 because it's a mirrorless camera. Sure. And so with it being mirrorless and digital, mm -hmm. it, you can ride it up higher than you can, like say the old D750. Right. Um, and not get as grainy of a picture. Yeah. Um, so that's 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 what I was going with on that. When it comes to uh, the the focus itself, though, like it just it depended on the situation, the lighting. But I was switching; I was constantly switching back and forth between manual yeah. and automatic. When I couldn't get it on automatic, that's when I would go straight to manual okay. because it just kept zooming in and out. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely have to do some manual sometimes, and of course that comes into play whenever you're shooting sports and you're shooting high action environments, like our next photo, which features some, you know, actually some real, some real action of the actual game. So talk to us a little bit about this photo and you know, got a little motion blur, you got a little, you know, depth of field. So talk to us about what's going on here and why you, you frame this photo like this. Absolutely. Um, so I wanted to use the ref in this photo. The first thing I want to do was I, one of the important things about going out to an event like this that I noticed, I kind of tried to attack it as though I would a field event. So I had a plan. I had, there was, I wanted to capture some motion. I wanted to capture um, uncontrolled action. And a football game is going to be filled with nothing but uncontrolled action for the most part. Sure. So how do, how do I demonstrate those things? Well, <clears throat> I want to use a depth of field. I want to use blurred action. I want to be able to freeze action. But what action do I freeze? Do I freeze when a ball's in the air? Do I freeze when he's holding the ball? Does it look posed? Those are the type of questions that go through my head. It's the type of questions I have with my students all yeah. day long, every day. So I wanted to show in this particular photo that there is a way to capture a football game, not just a foot race, but a football game with blurred motion while still showing a uh, solid, uh, somebody who was solid in there that could show you the drastic difference right. between somebody frozen and somebody who's blurred. He's not moving, so perfect for that. As long as I put them, put him in rule of thirds, it'll frame him and then frame everybody, use him as a frame and then frame them against the, f the edge of the photo. Absolutely. So um, the, the people in the background, they're not as in focus, but as long as they're in an acceptable focus, that referees in a sharp tack focus, it gives you a three layer setting like a cake. Sure. And that's, I think that it's a, it's a great representation of uh, blurred action. 
Absolutely, not every photo has to be the typical Absolutely. sports hero shot, right? Yeah. You can go and look for those variety of angles and variety of compositions that make for a overall story that you're trying to tell. Absolutely. Not everyone's gonna go on the playing card, so to speak. Uh, but we do have some a little bit more traditional style frozen action sports photo like our next photo. Talk to us a little about what's going on here. So the, I'd, I'd taken a sequence of photos with the quarterback. Um, the Army was pinned back on their two, I believe it was their three, two or three yard line. And the quarterback kept having to drop back in the end zone to throw. And on this one, he had just gotten the ball out. Um, I got him cocked back ready to throw, but I didn't necessarily get the ball coming out of his hand. But what I did get is the defense still tackling him or hitting him after, after the throw. So I, I used this to stop because I wanted to freeze the quarterback's arm. So I actually went with stop motion or frozen motion with this one um, so that I could actually capture the moment and try to get everything solid. So I went ahead and sped up my shutter speed. Uh, but it, it's, it, seemed, it seemed to work out. I didn't get the ball in. Most traditionally with sports photography, you, in my opinion, and from what I've been told by my friends who actually shoot NFL and other, other realms, you, wanna, you always want to try to get a ball in there. But this spoke to me. This, this told me that, uh, you know, hits occur. Right. Hits a curve. Football's a violent game. Sure. And you don't always have to have the ball around you to actually be involved in a collision. So I, I thought that this, this definitely showed that. What decisions were you making with regard to the, sh the choice of shutter speed you chose versus, of course, you know, having to compensate with higher ISO and aperture and all that? How are, how are you making that decision with regard to what shutter speed to choose and what shutter speed did you typically shoot at? So because I had a because I had a, a, a mirrorless again, um, the technology was better so I could drop down to one fiftieth of a second and okay. Uh, compensate with the aperture being around f11 f16 sure and that way you know there's reciprocity yeah. and I can actually balance the exposure of the photo while still trying to accomplish what it is I want to accomplish and I think that's one of the advantages of teaching here is that you as much as we go out and we shoot before I came here I could show you what to do on a camera. I couldn't mm -hmm. necessarily tell you this button is what this meant or what have you. But when I came here to teach, I had to relearn all that and be able to break it down for my students. So for me, it, it helps me remember when I'm out shooting now exactly what it is I want to do. And it just so happened that I had gotten done with the class I'm in now teaching them reciprocity, like the day before or two days before. There you go. So it was automatically in my head. <laughs> Um, hey, if I'm dropping the shutter, I got to raise the aperture and vice yeah. versa. So that's, it's one of those things where if I wanted to blur motion, I knew that I needed that shutter to stay open. So I had to get a smaller aperture and or vice versa. So Absolutely. Um, it's just, it, it was fresh in my head. Now, you know, of course, when we're shooting action, let's go to our next photo. Uh, this is another action photo. Now, when talking about shutter speed specifically if i want to freeze action that's my main goal when i'm shooting sports perhaps what would you recommend is sort of the best shutter speed to use when shooting something like a football game it just depends on the type of photo you want to shoot um like you said not everybody's going to uh, end up on the card um, so uh it, it just depends on what you're trying to capture uh, when it comes to frozen motion you want to shoot at a at a low a lower speed but i also had a monopod i brought a monopod with me which is just the one pole that you can sit you can sit the camera on. My tripod was a little big too big and or a little bit too big and too hefty. Yeah. And I didn't know that I'd have a media room that I could put my stuff down in. So sure. I had the monopod. I had it in my back pocket. Ugh. So I was running around with this stick sticking out of my pocket, mm -hmm. hitting people behind me. Wow. But it, I was able to I was able to put it down and use it for stability. But that also enabled me to use a lower shutter speed so that yeah. I, could, I could open it up further. Sure, absolutely. Um, when, it came to, uh, when it came to this photo in particular, I really wanted to capture the person ca or, or carrying the ball. Mm -hmm. I had been trying it all game long to try to get a solid photo of the person handing off the ball or getting the ball and running because by every time... Because they were, because I was, there were so many people plus the team to my right. I was stuck on the 10 to 20 yard line mm -hmm. on one side for a long while, so yeah. I had to shoot downfield. Yeah, and I just kept shooting, and all the linemen were in the way, and I couldn't get it. Sure. So I was able to creep over into the actual player zone where they, all the players were standing and shoot this, 
And I actually, it, luck of the draw, I was able to be there for the moment when the line opened up and the, the offensive line were blocking defensive line just opened up like a gate. And yeah. I was able to get the running back being handed the ball by the quarterback in a framed window. Right. And it, it's, one of my, it's one of my favorites that I shot. I really like it. Yeah, no, that's great. Uh, yeah, I mean, freezing that action, I mean, if you want that, you probably want about like what, 250th or 500th of a second, or you think higher? For, I'd, I'd go higher. Um, so like a thousandth of yeah, a second? Yeah, I'd go a thousandth of a second. Um, it just depends on the, the ability of your camera. Sure. I know with the students now, they're going to be getting Z6s, and yeah. with those Z6s is going to come a, a, a lot more capability. Sure, um, absolutely. So you can definitely go higher and freeze it. Uh, 500 and 250 could do it, but it just depends on the speed of the game, what you're right. trying to shoot, and, and the lighting situation. Me, I was jacking it up to 1,000 to 2,000 sometimes. Right. And then just, you know, again, going the opposite way with, with the aperture. And the capability of your lens, right? Yes, get, absolutely. I think your lenses go down to f2.8, yep. right? f2.8, yeah. I... Uh, it was a 250 and not a 200, so because the one I had on my personal camera, and um, so I, I had I had better lenses and a better camera, and that, that's why when I was putting everything together, I was making sure that this is the one I use for photography, this is the one I use for videography. Right. What were the uh, equipment your counterparts were using at the game? I'm sure they had probably some pretty long glass, like three, oh, yeah. four, five hundred. What, what kind of cameras and lenses were they using? Absolutely. So they were using the, the mirrorless cameras, of course. Um, of course. I saw some using Nikon. I saw some using Sony. Okay. Um, Sony's not something I personally, I've used um, ever since I learned how to shoot a camera here at Dinfos in 2013. Yeah. I've been Nikon and I've been Nikon ever since. I used a Canon out when I went uh, with the 24th PCH and I deployed out to Poland. Okay. I used it, I came in on somebody's kit and they had right. a Canon, uh, I think it was like a 5D or 7D or something like that. And I used that and it was just, the muscle memory was weird. Yeah, <laughs> I was used to a Nikon. So um, I haven't really used anything but Nikon since. Um, well, what about lenses? Lens, lenses, I, I have the Nikkor lenses. Um, I saw them, like you were talking about, they had like, the 400s and the 500s, yeah. and those are huge lenses. Right, of course. And I got to use those at Syracuse yeah. um, for, for the games, and the strength it takes <laughs> to hold that lens up. Sure. You can see why they have a monopod oh, yeah. mounted underneath, because holding that <laughs> thing is just for such a long period of time hurts. Yeah. Uh, but they had that. They had the monopod. They had those long lenses. They had the, the newer Sony mirrorless. Um, they had a couple, I saw a couple Luminixes. Oh, okay. um, they were out there doing video with Luminex, which is wow. like a DSLR, only, you know, you can shoot. It's mainly used for video, at least right. we have. Um, so uh, I saw I saw a whole bunch of stuff. Um, yeah. I tried not to be jealous. <laughs> <laughs> and I yeah. tried to just kind of, okay, this is what you got. You know how to do what you know how to, you know how to do what you know how to do with what you got. Sure. So just try your best at what what you're going to do. Absolutely. Let's see what your best was for this next photo here. A uh, little boy on the sidelines. Talk to me about this photo. What kind of what drew you here? So what drew me there is uh, the the emotion he was showing. It's kind of how we all felt at, at the time. Uh, there was a fumble. Yeah. Um, by the army. One of one of a Ugh. couple. I don't don't want to say it, but there was one <laughs> of a couple. And. Um, so he was he he was holding up his hands and giving his look, but his right. mother was also behind him, and every time she would turn around, he would start doing push-ups. Ah. So I got another picture of him doing push-ups. I, I didn't uh, have it here, but um, the emotion he showed w in this uh, when they fumbled, and he kind of looked back at his mom, who had been telling him to stop doing push-up the whole time, and looked back at her for kind of reassurance when he saw the fumble. It to me, it, it was like you have all these grown grown adults that are on this sideline, grown men that are dressed up to play football, and you have this one kid mm -hmm. on his knees doing yeah. push-ups right on the sideline with everybody else. Generals. Generals are out there. Yeah. Command sergeant majors of the Oof. Army are Oof. out there. And here this little kid is amongst them all just being able to enjoy a moment that everybody would want to be able to enjoy at that age. And sure. I, thought, I thought it was the look on his face was just priceless. Yeah, we would all have been so lucky to be able to go to something like this Absolutely. and be on the sidelines Absolutely. at his age, I'm sure. So that's great. Yeah, capturing those quieter moments, also something you have to think about, right? Yep. It's not just all action, and uh, catching touchdowns and whatnot. And we have another, of course, quieter moment, kind of looking at something from a different perspective. Tell us about this photo. Way more, to me, the, and, and I've learned this, uh, Rod Foliente, he's another instructor here. He's my kind of partner in crime with photography. And, um, you know, he, he, he taught me 
when I came in to pay attention to the quieter moments. Yeah. And so this, I saw that all the uniforms had different sayings on them, even though they were all one AD. They, I, you had some that said Vikings. You had, and I saw this one, this one uh, linebacker come off the field and his said happy as hell. And I was like, that is awesome. And I just asked him as he came off the field, I said, can I take a picture of your jersey? Because I'm used to asking people if I can, if I'm going to be up near your name tag, like sure. making it awkward, right. I at least want your consent. Yeah. And he said, yeah. And he just stood there. But before he said, yeah, you're like, eh. and then, he, <laughs> and then he said, yeah. So yeah. Um, that's, that's why I took it. And I thought that, again, I'm a huge fan of the Army uniforms every year and the right. Navy uniforms. I love what they do with them. But these in particular kind of touched me in the heart because one of the best units I ever served with 24th PCH was based with 1AD out in Fort Bliss. So we were a part of 1AD. So it kind of hit home a little bit um, that these were the jerseys and these are the uniforms they chose to wear. And PCH is Press Camp Headquarters, Press Camp right? Headquarters, yes. Okay. 24th Press Camp Headquarters out in Fort Bliss, Texas. Okay, great. And we have another photo here that's uh, kind of a rally shot, right? Like the team is kind of getting around. And what's going on in this photo? So the defense came off the field. They had just had a stand. And the, line, the, the linebacker coach uh, called them all over. So you got a mixture of uh, most of the linebackers, some of the DBs, uh, defensive backs. And they're, they're talking. They're scheming. They're going over, hey, this is what I just saw on this play. This was the formation that I just saw. What were you doing here when I saw you? cover the hole down on a blitz or come down crashing down on the defensive end. So I these are the moments for me being somebody who plays football and has played again played my whole life. Uh, I just I feel like these are the moments that mean a lot. Yeah. Because this is where if you're not holding your defense, if you're not taking a defensive stand and you need to come back, recalibrate, get everybody on the same page and move forward as a unit. Right. Um, it's one of the things I love about football. Uh, when I was playing semi-pro high school, uh, professional flag, and then you know all the flag football teams I played for, my biggest thing and my biggest love for this sport is the teamwork and the t camaraderie. Right. And um, the brotherhood it can build amongst the players. And this showed it to me. Everybody, nobody was talking, nobody was arguing, everybody was paying attention to the coach, and the lead linebacker was sitting down explaining what his defense was doing, and I thought that that was a very potent picture. Yeah, now obviously for this shot, you've got a wide angle lens on, yes. right? So you've had to switch from your long lens to a wide lens. Yes. Um, you know, how long does that take you to switch between lenses? And, you know, when are you sort of making that decision to commit to change lenses? So I'm, I make the decision when I see what I want to shoot. Um, when I see that there's something I want to get, it's kind of a split second decision sometimes. With this it was, I was out shooting the field, I saw them come off, and then I was still continuing to shoot, and then I heard them talking, I turned around and they're huddled. So here I am, reaching into my small little pocket to take it off, put, take off my 250, put on my, put on my 55, and you know, shoot. So for me, it's, I've done it so often and so much that I know the cameras that I'm working with. I'm working with, I've worked with the D750 for years. Right. Uh, the D, uh, my, my own Z50. I go out and shoot with it personally. So I know, I know how to, you know, not really look, but I know where the button is and how to turn it and right, everything. So for me, it becomes more of a just real quick switch it over. Um, but it can take a while depending on your, you can miss moments. Yeah. There, there are moments like you can, you can in the middle of a, there were a couple times during the game in the middle of a lens switch, I missed the moment that I really yeah. wanted to grab. And as a photographer, you got to kind of accept that and move on. It, it can be frustrating. You can be, I wish I had five camera bodies around me with a different lens, but in reality, you just got to kind of move on yeah. and make sure that you're getting what it is you can get and how you can get it. And you're not going to be able to capture anything right. or everything. Yes. I told my students earlier today, it's like, I would have loved to have been in the, the locker room afterwards, yeah. taking locker room shots sure. because those would have been awesome. Celebratory right. shots. I saw some video on it. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. I would have wanted to be a part of that. But unfortunately, you, you know, after spending all day and all night out there and it's dark and I had, I literally shot over 6,000 images Wow. and over 20 videos Wow. and, you know, vlogs and stuff. So like for me, you, I've been out there since what, 12 o'clock, and it's now almost 10:30. Yeah, I'm just I'm dog tired. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I wanna, I wanna, 
I want to. Sure. I think I got everything I can get. And yeah. plus, my memory card. Uh, again, going back to memory yeah. cards and, and batteries. Of course. Um, my memory my memory card uh, ran out oh. on my Z on my Z50, so uh -oh. I had to switch that out. And then my battery. I only have one battery for my personal camera. I haven't uh, got, I haven't gone out and bought another oof. one yet. So that when that battery it surprisingly lasted a long time that's in the good. cold. Yeah. But when it died, that's when I was like, okay, well, whatever I got to shoot now, which I think it was like near the end of the fourth quarter right. before the overtime. Yeah. I used this I used the rest of the seven fifty because I had an extra battery for that. Got it. But for everything else, for your main camera, you had enough batteries and memory cards yes. to absolutely everything. Fully that's charged good. everything. Uh, I had enough because I brought the extra stuff with me. Had I not, or not charged my batteries all all before the night before, I would have been. I definitely would have been hurting. Yeah, no, absolutely. All right, well, let's go to our next photo. This is a sort of a warm embrace here, um, but it's a, a two players, I guess, embracing after the game is done. Talk to us about this photo. So this photo right here, uh, again, everybody was everybody was clamoring around. We came off the sidelines. Uh, they it, it just we it was it was a mad bum rush from all everybody, and um, of course being in a situation like that, celebratory shots. You start to think of redeployments of when family members meet up and soldiers are kissing their babies for the first time that were born while they were gone. And I've covered my fair share of redeployments and yeah. deployments. So for me, it, it that's immediately what came to my head. So I had. To Find, I had to find players. I had to find players' interactions with students. Right. I had to run around and find those things. Um, what I was able to get this, and I was able to get a couple other ones before everybody in the stadium bum rushed the field, <laughs> and I was up like this the whole time. Oh my gosh! Um, just squished, and it was yeah. an amazing feeling. Um, I, I hope I didn't catch COVID, but like it just—it it, was—it was a great—it was a great great feeling being in the middle of all that and being a part of that and it just i was i was glad i was able to capture this moment before all that happened absolutely all right well we got one more photo before we go to social media so again if you have any questions for star first class tanner put those in the comments down below and we will read them on the air uh, so let's go to your last photo that you have here it's a, a member hiking the ball i know you like this photo quite a bit so talk to me about it i love the way uh i i I framed this photo. Um, my my wife loves this photo. This is one of her favorites. <laughs> uh, this I just I was able to get the center and the punter uh, practicing uh, for for our, practicing for holding the field goal kick. Yeah. And uh, again, this is why it's so important to be at an event early. Sure. This happened in the pregame. Yes. and not during the game. I mean, it happened several times during the game when they were kicking the field goal, but I couldn't stand out on the field in the middle of all that. Right. So I was able to get this shot um, as they were practicing in the end zone or right outside the end zone um, in pregame. And I just, I love the way I, was, uh, I composed it. Um, uh, not to sound egocentric or anything like that, but I just, I, I was able to frame this and fill the frame with these two players and get that moment right before he hiked it and when, if you've ever played with a long snapper and a punter or somebody or backup quarterback who holds the ball, there's, there's a relationship there. There's an unseen, untold relationship there because he has to get you the ball and you have to hold it just right for the kick to kick, for the kicker to kick it. And, um, and so they are constantly practicing together. And when the whole team's on the other side of the field doing something, these two are near the end zone practicing together to keep that relationship, that football relationship crisp. And again, with my history of the game, I just, I knew that that was something I want to capture and the way I was able to frame it, I think I did. Awesome, that's great. Well, thanks so much for sharing with us all of these awesome photos. Uh, let's go over to our social media moderator to see if anything came in to the social media channels. What All right, well, we did have uh, one question come in um, from uh, Evelyn. Uh, during the game, were you able to move around the sidelines pretty freely, or were you restricted to certain areas? Okay. So at the beginning, I was able to, to, to move around freely. Um, I, it's one of those you rather ask forgiveness than permission. Uh, so I had my vest on, and at first, it, I was very cautious. 
I was very cautious on where I moved, where I, because I had never done it before. But you had to walk out there with confidence, or people would start right. questioning you being oh, on yeah. the field. Absolutely. So I, I was walking around, and then out of the corner of my eye, while I'm shooting this ends of the Navy in the end zone, I see a reporter or a, a photographer running down towards the the bench, and I'm like, he's got a red vest on. I can do that too. And so I just ran behind him. I didn't ask any questions. I just ran behind him and acted as though I was supposed to be there. So for a very long while, I was able to run across the bench while they, in the middle of the game, when the players were, you know, walking around the sideline, I'm weaving in and out of them. That's how I got this photo. It's how I got our, our, the photo of uh, the group, uh, the mm -hmm. huddle. Sure. I was just weaving in and out. And then finally, that's when the I think the West Point PA caught me and was yeah. like, hey, you need to stick to the 10 to the 20, 20 yard line. Right. And I was like, okay. But you know. I had my decently long lenses, so sure. I could get some decent shots from that point, and I was able to be in front of all the other players, the freshman players that were not dressed. Yeah. So. I was going to say, could you have gone to like the end zone area to yeah. get photos as well? Absolutely. They allow you free reign. There were, there were command sergeant majors running around there yelling through horns <laughs> and holding up signs saying yeah. yell. And I got some B-roll of that. Uh, but they, we, you were able to freely walk around the end zone. Um, I think it was harder uh, to get to the other side of the field. Okay. Uh, where the Navy was or the opposite end zone. Sure. Because in order for me to do that, I'd have to walk around the touchdown, go into the building, or like underneath oh, the stairs. Okay. And then I have to walk all the way around the stadium to come out the other side. Oh. And by that time, how much am I going to miss? Right. So it's either make the choice of trying to get a different angle and a different view or capture what I can the best I can from where I'm at and don't miss anything. Sure. Try your best to be there for every moment, so I chose the latter. Absolutely. All right, great. thank you. Uh, anything else from social media? Yeah, so, um, basically, it's asking from your perspective as an instructor, mm -hmm. how can people train or teach themselves to have, uh, basically to create good quality sports imagery uh, if they're not you know, near uh, where a lot of sports are played? Okay. Okay. Um, well, th there are different things that can happen if you're at your unit. Uh, a lot of the uncontrolled action that you'll see can help you capture that. A lot of units have uh, flag football or intramural basketball, right. things like that. Um, the family days when people are running, sure. you can capture people running. You can go out into the field when you go into the field with the units and capture, you know, movement, bounding or uh, firing of weapons, all, all of that takes athleticism. Yeah. So uh, whether it's an extreme high level athleticism or very small level, it takes something. So I think that those are ways to, to focus on uncontrolled action and not planning on capturing just one solid form of movement. You can get freeze it, blur it, you just practice and you practice. Um, I think when it came to shutter speed and stuff, one of the things that I was really trying to practice on, my mentor at the time, he's retired now, but Staff Sergeant Pablo Piedra, he was ComCam. And uh, he, when I first got out to Germany, I was fresh out of Demphos. And ComCam took me under their wing, so I'm kind of like a ComCam child, mm -hmm. only PA. Sure. And uh, he, uh, he showed me, like he took a shot, and he showed me immediately he was able to capture a shell coming out, uh, a round coming out of a chamber. Right. And I wanted to do that, and I obsessed over it. And so that day, I think yeah, I, I shot for that day or two. Um, he took me to the range. I went out with him. Shot like 10,000 photos. Wow. Trying to freeze this round. And when I did it, I couldn't get enough of it. So then I went to the 9mm yeah. range and tried mm -hmm. it there and just all types of stuff. And... He, we got back, and I was like, and I, you know, I showed him, and he's like, I, I finally got it. And he's like, yeah, you finally got it. And he's like, guess, get, guess who gets to go through all those photos? You do, big guy. <laughs> and right. so, like, from that point, like, I realized taking a lot of photos can mean a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, however, like I told my students today, you don't want to cut yourself short. You want to yeah. have the material there to be able to access stuff that you didn't know you could even get or that you even did get. Yeah. Um, you just aimed your camera and shot. Do I think you should blind, spray, and pray? No. no. I think you should have intention. Absolutely. But I think you should also be willing to do that extra work and have those extra images and take that extra time to go through them in order to give yourself more of a, a bigger variety of stuff. So that's, that's how I shoot. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of the shells and coming out of the weapon, there was a photo, I don't know if you saw it, it kind of went viral a little bit, I think earlier this year, where the, the round actually landed or was suspended in midair right in front of the barrel, right? So it almost looked like 
the bullet coming out of yeah. the, the the weapon, and I was just like thinking of that. You know, you got to shoot thousands of photos to get that one frame. Yep. But again, that's also just getting you ready. And a lot of this, I think, is good practice, right? You, Find, there's very few bases I've been to that don't have sports going on, don't have sports fields or whatnot. Uh, and those are great ways to practice this type of fast moving action because you see it all the time, you know, when you're covering things that are going on from a military perspective, whether that be military vehicles like, you know, aircraft zooming by or people jumping out of aircraft, pararescue jumpers or, you know, parachutists. Absolutely. That's, that's a big thing that we captured a lot when I was a combat camera where they're jumping out of the aircraft and you've got to catch that split second action. You don't get a second chance of doing that. So practicing with sports and other high moving uh, targets is going to make you that much better proficient at understanding how to shoot at high speed action, at high shutter speeds or low shutter speeds or deciding which one to go with. Right? Absolutely. I, I completely agree. I think uh, I, Everything's a learning process. Every sure. it takes time to get to get to a point, and I definitely couldn't make these decisions, these split second decisions, having not been through situations similar to these situations. Um, again, I'm by no means perfect, and I my my imagery is by no means flawless. Right. Uh, but I I think that the more I do it, and the more that it I can relate it to my military service and what I've shot in my military service the more calm and easier it is when I'm in situations like this, I'm not nervous. I really thought I'd be nervous for this. On my drive up, I was surprised how calm I really was. Yeah. There were a couple times I had to tell myself, hey, you know what you're doing, you know what you're doing, don't be nervous, you know right, what you're doing. Right. But when the minute, the minute I stepped on that field, I felt at home. And I felt like instead of thinking like, can I do it, can I not do it, I immediately, I ran like a little kid in a candy store. I ran sure. directly to the field and saw them throwing the ball around. I was like, okay, I want to capture this. I want to do this. Go. So I, to me, it's, it's, it's about the love of the game, yeah. specifically this game, uh, football, but in all sports in general, it's just, it's about that love of being out there and in the moment and capturing everything it is that you see as much as you can see in a way that you see it. Yeah. Like, so I, 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 and I tell my students this all the time. I personally feel that my personal philosophy for photography is I want to shoot what you see every day in a way that I see it, where you'll look at it and not know what it is right off the bat, but then you see it and say, hey, I never would have thought to look at it from that angle. And yeah. that, that's, to me, that's how I, I, I want to shoot the rest of my life if possible. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to well one last time. Anything else there? No? Nope. Okay. I think that was all the social media questions we had. So before we sign off on this month's episode, uh, sorry, first class Tanner, is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, I'd just like to say thanks for the opportunity. I enjoyed myself. I had a great time. Uh, I'd love to thank my wife. I'm sure she's watching now just to, <laughs> just I hope to, so. yeah, I hope so too. Uh, my, my wife and my kids for allowing me to journey out to Philadelphia and uh, go do this. And just everybody who has supported me, you know, in the past, present, and hopefully in the future. And I just, I appreciate all the love and support. So thanks. Thank you. And we appreciate you taking time out to talk to us about this experience. And of course, going up there to capture it. So thank you again for being a part of the show. Really appreciate that. And thank you all of you for watching and liking and commenting and subscribing and doing all those great things to help the show uh, grow and be seen by more people. If you'd like to listen to the show versus watching it, you can of course download this show every month as a podcast. Just go to your podcatcher of choice and search for Dinfos Live and you can find it on there and subscribe to it and add it to your collection. So again, Thank you, Sergeant First Class Tanner, for your time. Really appreciate it. And all of you out there watching, thank you again for watching. Have a great, happy holiday. Enjoy yourselves, and we'll see you next year.